listening to episode 155 of the Tennis Files podcast, a lower body strength workout routine with no equipment. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Tennis Files podcast. My name is Mirban Aranshad, a former Division I college tennis player, and on the show, I interview the world's top pros, coaches, and experts to help you improve your tennis game. And lately, I've been doing a series on tennis fitness and if you remember last episode I talked about the dynamic warm-up and a really great routine in my view that will help you prime your muscles to perform at their best and also to prevent injuries and that's something that you can do before playing a match or working out or before practice and to follow up with the, the progression Now I'm going to introduce you to a lower body strength workout routine that I perform a couple times a week in which you don't need any equipment for either. And uh, this routine is going to focus on your lower body and will increase your strength, balance, and coordination to help you play better tennis. And so I'm going to, as I did with the previous dynamic warm-up routine, Uh, to describe this routine as detailed as I can on the show today. And if you need a visual, then check out my YouTube channel at tennisfiles.com slash YouTube very soon. Uh, I suggest that you visit that URL and then click the subscribe button and notification bell so then you'll receive an email about uh, as soon as I publish any sort of video, you're going to get a notification if you subscribe and hit the, the bell. And uh, as of the recording of this episode, I actually sent my video files for this, uh, the visual of this routine to my editor. So uh, definitely excited to see what she will create from that. But the importance of of strengthening our lower bodies is huge. Uh, Of course, you might ask yourself, why should we put in the effort, sweat, and time into a proper lower body workout routine? And the thing is, when you strength train, you are firstly going to lower your risk of injuries. And this is because strength training improves your joint stability and resistance to both uh, nervous system and muscular system fatigue. And when you fatigue, that is when your form breaks down, that's when your body breaks down, and that's when you are most susceptible to injury. So strength training is going to really help you in these areas. Uh, That was the reason why I got injured. I remember the day after I took the bar exam, I like played tennis for several hours and then I actually worked out before that and then I went in for yet another workout in the gym. I just went absolutely bonkers because I felt like a free man after (laughs) studying all those months for the bar exam. And so my body was fatigued, uh, but mentally I thought I was still able to to work out and I was just very excited and, and that's when my, I think both my nervous system and, and my muscular system, uh, they both were very fatigued and broke down and that's when I got injured because my form just went to hell in a handbasket, is that maybe what, what the term is? And so secondly, strength training will improve your power output on the court. I know many of you have heard of these terms strength, power, etc., but Power is a combination of strength and speed. And so the foundation of power is based on strength. And uh, this is why you want to strength train. It's going to be a game changer for you when you feel stronger on the court and have the confidence that your body isn't going to break down so easily. Uh, And then when you combine your strength with speed exercises and training, then that's when you're going to become a a much more powerful athlete, which is the goal for tennis players, Uh, explosive power in the form of movement and ball striking. Um, But as I just mentioned, the strength, your body's strength is the foundation for, for this power. And so over the years, I've interviewed... As I mentioned, sometimes hundreds of top tennis pros and coaches in the world. I've also read and studied tons of resources about tennis fitness, and I've even gotten certified by tennis fitness organizations like the International Tennis Performance Association, and I've learned a ton from a Racket Fit and their great instructors there as well. And um, 
You know, I think of this quote by Andre Agassi's trainer, Gil Reyes, and he said, actually, at one of the conferences that I attended on tennis fitness by the ITPA, he said, weak legs obey and strong legs command. And I remember even my dad would tell me uh, several times about how, I think on New Year's Eve, Andre Agassi was running hills and training uh, his legs. And this is um, what Gil stressed in his presentation to us in that conference. Uh, And so there's really no doubt about it that you need a strong and functional lower body to move well and play well on the court. And so with that sort of introduction and set up to the importance of training your lower body for strength uh, and other aspects, I'm going to walk you through a lower body workout routine now that is going to help you level up your tennis game and you're not going to need any equipment either. And so again, I can't stress this enough, before you do this workout or any type of activity, you really do want to perform a dynamic warm-up routine. And um, so I made a podcast episode about that, as I mentioned last episode, and you can also check out the YouTube video for that too on my YouTube channel. Um, The podcast is at tennisfiles.com slash 154, or just back up one episode on your podcast app. All right, here we go with the lower body strength workout routine. So first off, you want to do 10 to 15 reps uh, we're able to do you know a bit on the higher end, uh, especially because this particular routine is body weight. We're going to do two to three sets. So that's depending on your fitness levels. Obviously, if you're on the lower end, go for two sets. Or if this is your first time doing this type of exercise routine, do three sets if you're more experienced and you feel like you're fit. And while this is body weight, you can very easily add weight to any of these exercises. And so I caution you to go incrementally if you do that and to do that really only once you're you're able to master these movements and can do them without much trouble at all for, let's say, 15 reps, especially the ones that require more balance and stability. So uh, if in doubt, just do it with body weight first and go from there and progress in terms of the number of reps or perhaps the weight and also the number of sets. So the first exercise is the forward lunge. This is the first one that I do for this lower body strength workout. And I want to go through the benefits and then the form for each of these exercises. So with the forward lunge, I really love this exercise because it is a unilateral exercise. So it works one leg more than the other. And this translates really well to tennis where more weight is pretty much all the time going to be on one leg more than the other. Think of when you're running for a stretch forehand or lunging for a volley, obviously, directly translates here uh, to that movement and, and other, you know, the overhead, anything really. Uh, the weight uh, on your serve, when you're loading to the back leg and so forth. And uh, so this exercise is going to work your quads, hips, glutes, hamstrings, your core, basically your entire lower body. So the form is that you're going to have your feet hips width apart and then take a step and lower your body until the thigh of your back leg is parallel to the floor and your right shin is vertical. Uh, Try not to touch the ground with your back leg. And at the same time, you're going to want to swing your opposite arm of the leg that is moving forward. So say if you're taking a step with your right leg forward, then you're going to want to swing your left arm. And I like to do walking lunges to add more of a balance and stability aspect to the movement. If you do find that you're having a lot of trouble with the walking lunge then just you can do a stationary lunge where you step forward and then you uh, you lunge of course and then you just step back into the starting position but again I like to do uh, walking forward lunges so the next exercise is the backward or reverse lunge and I love doing the backward lunge because we often forget to train our backward movement and Uh, You're going to need to train this aspect because you will be moving backwards on the court some of the times, of course, to back up for certain ground strokes, for example. And the thing with this 
movement is it doesn't it, it, it does stress different parts of your lower body with the backward lunge. So this one is going to activate more of the glutes and the hamstrings than a forward lunge. And this is very significant. And in, in doing some research um, on these exercises, uh, it was highlighted to me, and which you can feel when you do the movement, um, this backward or reverse lunge puts less strain on your knee. Um, because pressure tends to stay on your heel uh, of the front foot more. So if you have knee issues, the backward or reverse lunge is a great option. And so when I read this, I, of course, did an experiment. Uh, you know, you do a forward lunge, and then there's going to be more pressure on that front knee rather than, than doing a backward lunge where, uh, as I just mentioned, your weight on your front foot is going to be more distributed towards the, the back on your heel so which is better for your knee less pressure so if you are having some sort of knee issues you can just replace the forward lunge with with another backward lunge variation but but in any case the backward lunge is a great complement to the forward lunge and this is our second movement and for the form it's going to be similar movement except you are stepping and lunging backwards uh, so same thing try not to have your back knee touch the ground you know front shin vertical yeah so that's that's pretty much it uh oh and have your thigh your back leg parallel to the floor as i mentioned so great movement the backward lunge exercise number three is the side lunge and we cannot forget about our lateral movement and that's why this exercise is is great to add to your exercise routine for the lower body and the side lunge will primarily work your quads and glutes, but adds in more of a focus on the thighs as well. And so uh, for the form, you're going to want to stand tall, have your feet parallel as, and shoulder width apart, uh, your back straight, and have your weight on your heels, and then take a wide step to the side and lower down until your knee is bent at a 90 degree angle or as close to that as you can manage. And then once you achieve that position, you're going to want to push back up. And then you want to keep going for, as I mentioned, 10 to 15 reps. So for each of these exercises, 10 to 15 is good. Uh, and then once you complete that amount of reps, then you're going to want to also go the other, other way so that you're equally working out each leg. Exercise number four in our lower body strength workout routine is the reverse lunge with knee lift. And so the benefit of this exercise is it's going to add more of a power and then balance and coordination element to the reverse lunge. And it's another fantastic one um, really for stability and, as I mentioned, balance. And so the form for this one is you actually start in the lunge position. Uh, and then once you're in that lunge position, you're lowered down with your shin vertical and your, your thighs uh, 90 degrees, then you want to swing your knee up as high as you can while, while also pumping your opposite arm like you would when you're sprinting. And you can add a five-second hold in the lunge position before you start that upward motion of swinging your knee up and then pumping your opposite arm. And this will obviously add more difficulty to the movement. And so... Lately, I've been enjoying uh, integrating these five-second holds on the last four to five reps of my reverse lunge with knee lift. I mean, you can do this hold for the entire set if you'd like, and I'm probably gonna, going to be trying this soon, and it will be burning quite a bit more, but that's it's, it, you know, it's a good thing to challenge yourself. And so that is pretty much the reverse lunge with knee lift there. And if you are enjoying this this uh, workout routine, then stick around for a free bonus that I think you'll really find useful. And so with that, now legs keep going. Ooh, dad jokes. All right. Uh, <laughs> exercise number five is the squat hold. And for this one, you can aim for 30 seconds to one minute. Um, you can do a bit more if uh, you are so inclined and if you are fit enough to do so. Uh, give it a try for sure. And the benefits here are it helps your entire lower body. It's really good for your posture and, of course, for your stability here. 
in um, you know being able to to both achieve and then keep that that uh, squat position for an extended amount of time, not just for a couple seconds. And so the form here is what I, what I like to do is keep my arms out in front, and then you're going to slowly and carefully squat down to a 90 degree angle. So uh, I, I like getting to that position rather than, than holding in a partial position. And of course, if you are for whatever reason reason unable to get to that 90 degree position, then sure, you can do a partial. But squat down to 90 degrees and then keep your weight on your heels. Very important. Back straight. So you want to feel like you're squatting down to sit on a chair or a toilet. Eh, maybe we'll go with chair. A little, a more clean example. And yeah, that's the form for the squat hold. And then hold it for 30 seconds to a minute. Exercise number six is the single leg squat. Now this is a great unilateral leg exercise again that improves balance, coordination, stability, and strength on one leg. And I love how the single leg squat f focuses on the, the one leg at a time, uh, which is just again so helpful for sports like tennis. And what is really amazing about this exercise in particular is that it's really good if you have certain knee issues such as runner's knee. And so definitely if you have knee issues, you're going to want to um, use this exercise, the single leg squat. And as I mentioned, the uh, reverse lunge is also a good alternative to uh, your normal lunge. But anyways, with a single leg squat, you're going to be working the quads the hamstrings and the glutes really well. And for the form, you're going to want to lift one leg and then squat down with the other leg down to parallel or as far down as you can if you can't reach parallel. And that leg that you have lifted up to place all the weight on the other uh, leg, uh, you're going to want to keep that leg bent. Uh, 90 degree angle works. All right, and then for exercise number seven is the Bulgarian split squat. This is yet another great single leg exercise, and you can see a theme here. It's really, really useful to be training your, uh, your legs unilaterally and putting more focus on one at a time because of the sport of tennis and how it works. And so the Bulgarian split squat really works the quads along with your balance and coordination. And for this one, it is ideal if you have a chair or bench nearby. And you're going to want to put your back leg on the bench and have it bent and then lunge down with the other leg and bend that front knee to 90 degrees. So you're going to want to find an ideal placement for the front leg in terms of how far up you, you have that, that your, your front foot there. And you might have to hop around a bit to find that ideal and comfortable uh, positioning of, of the front foot and leg for you. All right, and that is your lower body workout routine uh, with no equipment. As I mentioned, again, two to three sets, 10 to 15 reps, depending on your fitness levels. And each time you do it, try to improve a little bit in, in, a, in an aspect of those parameters, whether that's you know increasing a rep or two, increasing to another set, or even adding weight once you can max out the uh, three sets and 15 reps, ideally. And so I really hope that you got a lot of value from this podcast episode. And if you did, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to the Tennis Files podcast. And this benefits you by uploading or by having the episodes immediately be downloaded to the podcast app of your choice that you subscribe, uh, use to subscribe to the show. Uh, and it also really helps the podcast rank up, uh, which then gives uh, more visibility to the show. So again, would appreciate uh, you subscribing to the podcast. And uh, the bonus that I mentioned, if you want this workout routine in a handy PDF, just go to tennisfiles.com slash leg workout. Again, that's tennisfiles.com slash leg workout to download it for free. And this PDF will also include some handy tips on the forum to make sure that you perform it correctly. And the link will also be in the show notes um, of this episode, which is located in your app and also at tennisfiles.com slash 155. And I certainly know that you can't wait to download it.
Another dad joke. That's two. Uh, I don't know. I might delete that pun later. We'll see. Probably not. Uh, and remember, I'm going to publish a YouTube video very soon showing you this entire workout, depending on when you're listening. It may already be up. And you'll you'll be able to check that out by going to tennisfiles.com slash YouTube and just subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell and you will get notified about it. All right, well, uh, I just want to close with a quote of the day. And this quote is by Ellen Goodman. And the quote is, We ought to walk through the rooms of our lives, not looking for flaws, but looking for potential. And I really do love that quote. It, it obviously keeps things on the positive end. I mean, certainly you can take note of your, you know, let's say areas that you need to improve, but it's much better to, to really focus on the potential out there and to take advantage of that. And, and as I always try to mention, it's, it's so important that we take action on, on what is necessary to move us forward and to break things down. I'm reading a, a book called The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday, and that's really a great book about just finding obstacles and then kind of psychologizing it to those obstacles are really the path forward. So they're not blocking your path, they are the path. And to breaking down any sorts of obstacles that you have in your way or, or things that you want to accomplish into manageable tasks and then to take action uh, and then to reap the rewards. Obviously, a, a huge oversimplification of the book, but that's an excellent book that I will link in the show notes page, and you're definitely going to want to check that one out. It's it's really good. All right, well, thanks so much for listening to this episode of the podcast, and please remember that if you keep improving yourself a little bit every single day, then over time, these gains are going to compound into massive success for you and your game. So just stay focused, really try to push out any distractions, any negative people or, you know, things that you read or whatever or uh, criticisms, you know, take the criticisms with a grain of salt and, of course, take heed to the constructive ones. But um, for those that are not a constructive, uh, just pay no attention. Just keep focused no matter what on your goals and the process and enjoy the process and focus on that, not the results. And then eventually the results will come. All right, with that, I will see you on the next episode of the Tennis Files podcast. Be safe, be well, keep improving your tennis game, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Peace.